I grew up in Kansas City, Kansas. My mother at the time worked in the much more affluent Johnson County, Kansas. At the time, I attended a private school until the untimely death of an aunt forced my mother to choose a public school for me to attend. I remember sitting in the car on that first day of school in the second grade, rehearsing in a dress that was not my own. When I asked her what would happen if my teacher found out where we really lived, she told me that I would have to go to a school closer to where we lived, one that wasn't quite as good. I didn't have the language to name it then, but this was my very first experience with what I would come to know as white supremacy culture, enacted from the last person you might expect, my very own mother. You see, we are all, all prone to white supremacy culture. White supremacy culture is defined as an artificially created, historically constructed culture where we value white people, the ideas of white people, the beliefs and the actions over people of color. As Tom would tell, she couldn't have been further from the truth. When I was transferred to a new school, one that was closer to where we lived, I met my favorite teacher, Mrs. Washington, and a handful of peers that would become my lifelong friends. You see, Mrs. Washington saw something in me that my other teachers couldn't see. She, she knew my internal greatness, and in that, she was able to make sure that I was able to thrive under her strict but loving care. David's experience is not an isolated one. Many students are misinterpreted because their teachers are not regarding them in the correct cultural lens. So, why did I mention that? A study in 2017 found that low-income black students' probability of dropping out of high school decreased by 29% if he or she had just one black teacher. We all know the critical role that teachers of color play in our schools. So why aren't schools, especially those that primarily serve black and brown students, not retaining teachers of color? Well, the short answer is, teachers of color are being demoralized by our school systems. So what can we do to stop this demoralization? We need to develop a school culture that prevents this demoralization in the first place. Like Mrs. Washington, these teachers are often the bridge between the dominant societal culture and the culture that their students of color are more familiar with. Think back to your favorite teacher in school. What made them special to you? Was it the way they seemed to understand you, even on your worst days? Now imagine that you'd never met them. What would David's life have been like had he never met Mrs. Washington? Regardless of how it happened for you, we can all agree that students deserve a chance to make these kinds of meaningful connections with their teachers. Students of color deserve to have a chance to make meaningful connections with teachers of color who understand them and share the same cultural values. With the increase of students of color in our public schools, one would think that there was a matching increase in teachers of color that could bridge this cultural gap. However, these numbers have remained stagnant. Around 10 years ago, there were, about, there were less than 25% black teachers, around 10% Latinx teachers, and less than 4% Asian teachers. Around three years ago, these numbers were pretty much the same. This might not seem like a big deal to all of us, because, I mean, at least we have some teachers of color in the classrooms. However, in 1974, there was a desegregation order that indicated that we should have at least 25% black teachers, for example, which means that it has been 44 years and we still have not hit the mark. <laughs> what we have now is what we've had for years and years, a majority white teaching population teaching an ever-increasing population of black and brown students. These teachers mean well, but often do not speak the language of their charges. Additionally, with white teachers comes white culture, and thus white supremacy unfortunately reigns supreme. 
the side effect of this is that teachers of color in these schools are then left feeling isolated as they are forced to work in a situation that is not reflective of their values and norms. So what can we do to better support our teachers of color and change the culture of our schools? Well, for one, we need to learn to discuss it using precise language. Take, for example, the language we use when a teacher can no longer continue on in the work. We often use the term burning out. When we use a term like burning out, we put the responsibility to change onto the individual while ignoring the conditions for the individual that is demoralizing. We need institutional change. And the way that we get there is by learning to use the, the correct vernacular to describe what white supremacy culture is, how it shows up in our everyday interactions, in our ILT meetings, in our board meetings, so that we can correctly discuss how that affects teachers of color and hopefully be able to explain why we jump around from school to school more often than our white counterparts or leave the profession altogether. Teachers of color pay an invisible tax when asked to work in environments dominated by white supremacy culture. When talking to teachers on why they left the profession or switched schools altogether, I was given the following responses. One teacher left because they were used as a disciplinary agent for all the students of color. This was because they were, quote, the only teacher that can control them. Another teacher left because every year as Black History Month arrived, she knew that neither her nor her black students would be celebrated or acknowledged. You get one month to celebrate your existence, and even that's not happening. And lastly, another teacher was demoralized when she went to advocate for support, but was met with opposition and seen as combative and lazy. When these teachers went to advocate for themselves and their students, the administrators met them with defensiveness, having a fear of open conflict, did not want to engage in uncomfortable discussion or enact an uncomfortable change. This is how white supremacy manifests itself with those in power actively resisting any changes or shifts. This has been going on for many years, and we can see it in the data. And that's why we formed a group called Tribal, Teachers Resisting Inequity for Blacks, Asians, and Latinx, to shine light on these issues and to create a community that will finally begin to make a change. However, we cannot do this work alone. Institutions need to invest in an analysis of the ways that white supremacy is shaping their school structures and policies. These structures and policies need to be shifted to display the inherent value of teachers and students of color. School leaders need to communicate decisions clearly and seek input from those who are most affected by those decisions. Do not expect those who raise hard issues to raise them in acceptable ways just to ensure your own comfort. To schools who have the confidence to do this work, know that the path is not easy. Understand that discomfort is the root, and, a root of all learning and growth. Lean into it. Don't take everything so personally. The structure of oppression cannot in and of itself facilitate dialogue or prevent discomfort. We are all good learners of the system of oppression we have been taught in. To educators of color, understand that while working within the culture of white supremacy, you're doing so in an inherently hostile environment and that this is not your fault. You must remember to protect your energy and attend to your mental health. Do not isolate yourself in your work. Find or create groups like the Teacher's Lounge or tribal so, so that you can start to validate your experiences. No one in this room is immune from the culture of white supremacy or for supporting it. My mother, like many of us, was raised within a culture that holds white as dominant. To ensure the success of our students, it is up to each of us to reflect on how we carry that into our educational spaces. Thank you. <laughs>